Hey everyone, Vale here, and today we're back with a video all about the 10 best top lane champions to main in Season 12. This will be a video series covering each role on a different day of this week, so if you enjoy this video, tune in tomorrow for the next one. Just before we get started, obviously there are a ton of champions in the game at the moment, and it's pretty difficult to narrow the selection down to 10. So remember, this is a matter of opinion, so don't be offended if your champion didn't quite make it. Let us know in the comments who you're looking forward to playing most in Season 12 and why. Anyway, let's dive straight into it, and first off, we're going to go with a champion who's been very contested in the last few months, and that's actually Trindamir. Now, this champion has always been incredibly difficult to play against, and his ability to 1v9 games out of nowhere is probably up there with some of the best champions in the game. Trindamir's snowball potential makes him unstoppable when he gets a lead early game, and due to his ultimate, his mobility and healing, he becomes so, so difficult to shut down. There are so many Trindamir one tricks at high ranks because simply, if you get good at this champion and understand how he actually wins games, it's just a free one way ticket to high elo. Trindamir's kit and basic gameplay is also pretty straightforward to learn too, and it's also fairly simple to actually win lane on him too to be honest. But learning how to put that lead to the test and how to abuse that advantage to win games is really what makes the difference when you're trying to rank up quickly. Trindamir is the king of split pushing, and it's his main playstyle and his main way to win games, but he can also teamfight especially when he's really far ahead. Setting up a flank or cutting teams off is an amazing way to clean up and just basically kill every single person in a matter of seconds. With a bit of practice, this champion is definitely one of the best in that top lane. So next up we've got Set, and what a fun addition he's been to the top lane since he joined the Summoner's Rift. Set brings strong dueling potential, AoE damage, CC and disruption to the table, all of which are infinitely more effective when he's got a lead early game. Top lane is all about snowballing, winning lane and then influencing that lead you gain into the rest of the map to win those games. Set is definitely someone who can do this brilliantly with his early aggression and then bring that advantage to dominate and disrupt teamfights. Lethal Tempo has also made Set even more of a threat recently, giving him some absolutely mental trading power and it makes his 1v2 or 1v3 potential even stronger. Of course there's also still the classic Conqueror which is still very strong especially in certain matchups. When it comes to team fights on set, scooping up a huge tank and landing them directly into an entire team is unbelievably satisfying and has got to be enough reason to play set on its own. The damage you can deal to a whole enemy team can be nutty and if you pair this with some allied wombo combo ultimates like a 3000 elo shockwave you're gonna feel like you're famous. This champion is definitely a fun one to play and can undoubtedly impact games from that island of the top lane. Now we're going to be bringing Malphite to this list next, a real traditional high impact tanky brick wall from that top lane who actually offers a crazy amount of damage too, especially when he gets an early lead. Malphite is a classic tank in the top lane focused on a little bit of harass with his Q and Arcane Comet but mostly just farming to get that ultimate and then dominating the game with that ability. Malphite's ultimate is easily one of the best spells in the entire game and just having that ready to go is a very enjoyable experience. Malphite's never really been known to be as fun as the crazy champions you can get in the top lane, but winning games is fun, and having so much impact in teamfights from level 6 for the rest of the game is a great way to make your mark. Malphite's teleport ganks, early skirmishes around objectives, or even roams down to mid lane with his ultimate are easily enough to sway those games into your team's favour. So you don't just need to sit in lane and slap minions for a living. Get involved and really abuse that ultimate as soon as it's up, especially if you can't actually kill your lane opponent. Anyway, if you do need a tank to add to your champion pool, Malphite is an absolute no-brainer, no matter what elo you're playing in. Irelia is going to be next on our list, and for very different reasons to Malphite. Irelia is definitely one of the more spicy bruisers you can pick up there in the top lane. Irelia's kit looks pretty complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. Playing her, however, is not quite as straightforward. Irelia's ability to perform well depends on that player behind her, meaning, if you know what you're doing, this champion is absolutely immense. Her ability to outplay her opponents even when the odds are all against her makes her such a fun champion to watch and to play. She can dart through minion waves healing up along the way during fights and constantly make her enemies lives hell. Aurelia is definitely a champion who has the potential to abuse her lead more than most other champions. Similar to Trindamir, she can basically just dive her enemies on repeat once she gets the ball rolling. Aurelia's ability to snowball and carry games makes her a definite pick for this list, but to be honest she's just incredibly fun too. If you like high skill ceiling champions and you want to show off to your pals with some fancy moves, Aurelia is definitely up your street. Now it's time to put your hands in the air and rave sideways because we got to mention Urgot. As I've said before, this champion has always been a little bit overshadowed by its other top lane peers, but he's just stupidly strong. I don't know about you guys, but I always die a little bit inside when I see this champion locked in against me. Urgot is the ultimate anti-fun, anti-melee top laner. All of his damage absolutely slaps at close range and he can be immensely difficult to deal with once he gets that lead. 
Urgot can dance around you in lane abusing his passive, and then when he's locked that ultimate onto you, it's genuinely game over. Urgot is an amazing champion when it comes to cleaning up fights and setting up flanks. You can think you've won a huge team fight, but you've forgotten about that crab, and now you've been aced. Urgot offers a really unique playstyle in the top lane too. He's a very close range melee abuser, but he's also amazing at abusing that ranged advantage. When he feels like the time is right, he'll dive on you and burst you down with his ultimate. Urgot is definitely a champion you shouldn't forget about, and if you learn him well, he can certainly take you to new heights in those ranking ladders. If you really don't want to play him, I'd definitely advise just learning how he actually works, so you don't get dumpstered every time you play against him. Next up, we've got Jax, and he's just another really classic top lane bruiser carry, who's still just as strong as he was back in the day. Jax is sometimes forgotten about these days due to all the modern League of Legends champions being so dominant in that solo lane, but obviously, he's never really gone away. Jax's scaling makes him an absolute monster going into the later stages of the game, but he's actually pretty strong in lane 2, especially from level 6 onwards. That third auto from your ultimate's passive combined with your W can offer some really nice burst, and this can easily help you outtrade a lot of lanes, especially when your E is up. Jax works pretty well into a large variety of matchups, and you always know you're going to be more than capable of doing your job once you've got those one or two core items. Jax's ability to split push is undeniably one of his main winning conditions, but he can also flank, clean up, and team fight very well too. Jax is doing super good going into the season due to the strength of his itemization and lethal tempo complementing him so perfectly. If you're looking for a main champion who can 1v9, carry the most unwinnable games, and have a lot of fun whilst doing so, Jax should definitely be in your champion pool. Now we couldn't get through a top lane video, especially going into season 12, without talking about Shen. Another brick wall that has historically always been a great pick in this top lane, with one of the most influential ultimates in the game. Shen's ability to teleport to the rest of the map with his ultimate and not only grant his allies a huge shield, but then actually turn the fight into his team's favour is what makes him so damn effective. Remember that teleport is actually getting nerfed in Season 12 too, so you can't even use it to minions and wards, you can only use it to turrets, until you're basically in the mid game. This is going to make Shen so much stronger and generally anyone that's got a global ultimate as it will be so much harder for your enemies to teleport and join the fights. If Shen uses his ultimate well throughout games he can easily sway many fights and completely carry games by himself. The funny thing about Shen though is just how much damage this champion actually does for a tank. Once he gets a lead in lane he's actually really difficult to duel and he can start snowballing incredibly hard and end up winning both the lane and also the rest of the map too. All of these incredible strengths are why Shen's such a good champion to have in your pool, but another great reason is his ability to lock up entire teams with a good taunt. One flash E and you've completely won a team fight and maybe even the game for your team. Next up we're going to talk about Kale, and she's in a super good spot at the moment. Kale is genuinely one of the scariest champions to play against in the whole game, and if she gets to level 16, the game is probably over. Kale is easily one of the best scaling champions in the whole of League of Legends, and there's not many more champions that can rival her damage potential in that late game. Kale is a ticking time bomb, she gives massive power spikes at level 6, 11 and 16, and when playing against her, you always feel so pressured and against that clock. At the moment, she's having a much better time in lane 2, which is where she's always struggled the most in the past, but now with lethal tempo, teleport changes coming in, and objective bounties helping her scale faster, she's in a really good position heading into Season 12. Riftmaker and Nash's Tooth is the most popular build option for her at the moment, and this item path is really complementing her well. Kale has always had flexible build paths, but whatever she goes for, she always seems to pop off, especially the later the game goes on. If you're not too fussed about stomping lane and prefer to play for those big team fights and want to carry games by yourself, Kale is definitely a great option for you. Now, there is absolutely no way we could have gone through the best top lane champions in the game without having Camille on this list. Camille has absolutely been dominating in the top lane scene for quite some time now, and despite some nerfs to her recently and her runes, she's still absolutely brilliant and she's easily one of the best champions in this role. Camille's ability to run away with games with those mahoosive legs is one thing, but how hard it is actually to shut her down is another problem altogether. Her mobility, burst and overall kit versatility make her such a difficult champion to deal with, especially once she starts snowballing. Just a few early kills is all it takes for a good Camille player to completely win the game by herself. She can consistently jump on her enemies with her E and burst any type of opponent down due to her itemization and scaling. Camille's ultimate is also one of the best abilities in the game to isolate and pick off a specific target, so if there's an enemy on the opposing team that's trying to rival her ability to carry, she can easily take them out and claim that free LP. Camille is definitely one of the strongest picks in this lane, and if you consider yourself a top lane main and you haven't been playing this champion, you should probably ask yourself why. A really solid pick into a crazy amount of matchups. On to our final top lane pick of the day, and it's actually going to be Satan himself, Teemo. 
So Timo got some juicy buffs towards the end of Season 11, and he's still reaping the rewards of them, ready for Season 12. Timo's ability to destroy low range lanes and tilt his enemies off the face of the earth make him such a snowballing monster in that top lane. Timo has always been known for just how annoying and how frustrating he is to play against with his mushrooms, his ranged advantage and his blind on his Q. However, it's actually his damage that just makes him so unbelievably strong at the moment. The damage over time that he does with his poisons and shrooms and the burst he gets from his blind which is on such a low cooldown, especially in the late game, just make him so hard to actually play against. It's actually such a task just to try and auto attack this guy in between his Q's cooldown, especially in the late game. This champion can also lurk in the shadows with his passive and make his own mushroom kingdom around objectives, meaning if you walk anywhere you're at risk of being ambushed and one shot by the devil himself. Timo is definitely in a fantastic spot going into the new season and let's be honest, why wouldn't you want to play this champion to make your enemy's mentals explode in a matter of seconds? Well that's going to finish off our 10 best champions to main in season 12. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you again tomorrow for the next video in this series. Thanks for watching and we'll see you then. Take care.